The transition from 2D to 3D in video games was very needed. <laughs> from the SNA estates to then move on to this shit on the 64 blue kids' minds. Of course, I can't describe what time was like to be a kid from the 90s experiencing this transition unfold in front of my dumb baby eyes, but I can't imagine it would have gone something like this. It's me, Mario! Hello! I grew up with the Game Boy, DS, GameCube, and Wii, and those games are what most people my age are starting to become nostalgic for again. And in my opinion, the GameCube was the best Nintendo console ever. Yes, yes, I get it, many people will probably get mad at me for saying that, but think about this. What is your favorite console? And don't say the newer generation consoles because we all know that's not true. It's mostly going to be a game console you grew up with that you played for hours on end and had a very minimal selection of games that you would cycle through all the time. It's just like the water cycle. To me, that was the GameCube and my games consisted of Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, Mario Superstar Baseball, Crash Tag Team Racing, Madden 07, My Brother Likes Football, and Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. This game is something else, let me tell you. Nothing's funnier than running around in a chicken suit, chucking eggs at fat monsters that are made out of crows and hatching the occasional animal who you could befriend to then use specific moves to help you progress through the levels. Wait a fucking minute. This game is not afraid to get weird. The idea of this game sounds insane and would make you sound like an insane person if you try to explain this in the boardroom. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we need ideas. This Dreamcast shit we're doing just ain't gonna cut it. We need games and fuck it, let's put them on the GameCube. Any ideas? Oh, what if we released a new Sonic game where you can play as multiple teams and make the controls unbearable to use and just never finish the game? I like that mentality you've got, sh controls, sh level design, it's perfect. What else? Uh, if we're on the topic of Sonic, why not release a spin-off with Shadow, make it more violent and edgy for the young boys who want to say f you to their parents. My god, that's brilliant! And let's make those controls garbage as well, keep it coming! Let's make a bunch of car games that make no sense. Monkey balls! Let's make an F-Zero game, why not? More monkey balls! More monkey balls! More monkey balls! More monkey balls! More, more monkey, monkey balls! balls. <coughs> Fucking worms. What if we made a game where you're a kid in a chicken suit and you roll eggs around trying to bring morning back to different islands because there's this dark crow that took the sunshine away and put these elder chickens into golden eggs that you have to go release or else the darkness will take over the land completely and plus your friends are also in chicken suits who you need to save as well but we won't tell you how they got captured. Who the fuck are you? Today I would like to go over Billy Hatcher and there's a lot to talk about this game. There is no story. Honestly, you're late to meet up with friends, then you get transported to what's called Morning Land. That's very clever. Darkness takes over the world of chickens. You wear chicken suits and you try to bring the morning back to the land. That's it. That's the plot. Frame it, put it on a wall, masterpiece. In the gamer world, you have AAA titles, modern platformers, 3D garbage, and whatever this shit is. Guess where Billy goes into? Go on, guess. Well, if you guess 3D garbage, what the f Dude, that's so rude. Do you not know how long it takes to make a video game, you incompetent piece of sh**? Fuck you! Producer Yuji Naka of Sonic fame created this game first to be released onto the GameCube because the system was veered more towards the true Nintendo fans, which shows. Have you seen the GameCube library all at once? The consistent number of great games was never far from short. In fact, I'll go as far as to say the GameCube has one of the best libraries of any system. The 8th generation consoles obviously have the superior amount of high quality games and just the abundance of indie games. There's no denying that. Although, looking back at older generations, it's clear that back then, quality over quantity, to me, was the King Julian of the Jungle, or whatever the f*** he says. The GameCube came out in 2001 against the PlayStation 2 and the newcomer, the Xbox, whoa, also the Dreamcast, but nobody likes it. At the time of its release, the GameCube did fairly well for the beginning of its life. Luigi's Mansion, Super Monkey Ball, also released by Sega, which by the way, Sega did release a lot of games on a GameCube then their own system just goes to show why they stopped making systems. <laughs> Look, what I'm trying to say is that the GameCube's game selection was incredible, and Billy was not an exception. Maybe. Probably. Each stage is set up like Mario 64, meaning that each world or island in this game has a specific star, or it looks like a badge you get from wringing a chicken's neck or something, I don't know. 
In each island, you're required to find the golden egg, which contains the chicken elders who were imprisoned by the evil crows. Fuck, I sound insane saying this out loud. Forest Village, Pirates Island, Dino Mountain, Blizzard Castle, Circus Party, and Sand Ruin. I will admit, the names given in this game are very creative and so cool sounding, better than when I named my Torch at KFC or Canes. Each of which have eight different missions to clear. Yes, notice how I put different in quotations. That's because you only have like six objectives that are repeated in different orders for each level of each island. Oh, plus along the way you have to rescue your friends Rolly, Chick, and Bantam. Rolly, being the best female companion character in any video game, don't at me. Oh. From the beginning of the four stages, the levels are set very nice. Open land, easy jumps, it's like it's a kid's gamer or something. For all different islands, there is one map for each stage. The objective is different for each one, but it's just the same stage for each one, which in my opinion, is not that interesting nor fun. Like, okay, you give me six stages to work with, yet there's only one level for each of them, and the game only gives you what it wants you to see at certain times in these levels just cause. Which to me is not good level design. Not just cause the stages are very small when you need bigger platforms to stand and move around on, and oh boy, we'll get back to that later, but because the objectives that are repeated for each island just shuffled around does not work well with these stages. One of the objectives that you must complete is rescuing eight chickens from cages. How they got there, I don't know, I don't care. You're supposed to run through the stages like you normally would defeating the monsters and other things, but then help rescue chickens too? But again, remember how I said the entire stage is just a big circle? Don't you think that means the levels should be easy, seeing as you just have to follow a path and you'll rescue all the chickens? Well, no, that means the game developers decided to make new areas on the circle to go to and don't tell you. Imagine this. You're told to walk from one point to another collecting, I don't know, rocks along the way. The cool little sparkly one. And while you're doing that, you have to walk in a specific route you were given. You can't go anywhere beyond that. Well, how about when you're halfway through, we'll let you take a shortcut to get to the end, but just not tell you. And oh, let's make it extremely difficult to pass once you find that shortcut after dying a hundred times trying to complete the main path that already is stupid and difficult. All of this on a stage that has extremely tight platforms so you can't move at all or you'll fall with gaps so far that you have to jump at a very precise spot at the right moment or you'll fall. Oh yeah, one last teensy weensy little detail. We won't tell you where the checkpoints are at all. So if you get a game over, back to the beginning, bucko. Bad level design, this is in Mexico. Which doesn't make sense, especially when all of this is thrown at your head out of nowhere when you start off the game with the forest island all seems good you're given wide open land good platforms to maneuver and not fall off of a path that makes sense when following the arrows and objectives that work well with the stage because of those points i just said to then go from that to this is again not good level design also sometimes you can't make the jumps with the eggs it'll just say no and you have to wait for the egg to despawn so you can then grab it make the jump again but then you'll fall again and then this game's punching my nuts like a punching bag now one could argue that i just maybe suck at video games which i 100 percent agree with you on but now i wasn't the type to play video games all the time as a kid well, I mean, I was, but I was also dumb and just wanted to play the same two games over and over. So clearly, I don't know what makes a good video game. Although, I have been getting into Mario Galaxy recently, so that basically just means I know everything about every game, and you should only listen to my opinion. Saying that, the controls in this game suck dick. The right Joy-Con obviously controls Billy and friends, A is the jump, which also slams you to the ground when holding an egg in the air, and double-clicking A does a bounce jump. When holding an egg, if you click B, you'll do a boomerang move with the egg. While suspended in the air, you can also hit B, throwing the f***ing thing. Whenever you have an egg, you'll be able to dash using the right trigger, also because that's the only way to run faster because you're f***ing hopping around. Plus, you'll be able to dash jump when you dash. I know, that's crazy. Be careful because if you dash too quick, you won't be able to jump at all, so time your dashes accordingly. Whenever you hatch an egg and a random animal appears, if you befriend it, you'll be able to use that poor thing to kill others around you and eventually itself by clicking the X button. Psst. Hey, you see that sexy, sexy yellow stick? Yeah, use that hard boy to move the camera around you. But I mean, hey, if you don't want to waste 10 seconds turning the camera around, just use the L trigger to zip that bad boy behind you where the camera should stay most of the time. This game likes to fuck with you a lot of the time. Maybe not for you, I mean sh 
Watching Alpharad's video of him playing the whole game, he didn't seem to have much trouble with the controls. Like I said, I'm not a good gamer, but these controls are inexcusable. Going back to the stages and how frustrating each one can be, these controls do not help one bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. <gasps> what you can't fall? Oh yeah, they have. No, no, no! <laughs> oh, why do you, why do you fall with the egg? Oh, you stupid f kid! And it's extremely noticeable when you play every single island besides the forest one. Once again, because the forest level is wide and gives you room to move around, while every other island is tight and unfair and dumb and stupid, it makes me, it makes me want to cry. There's another part to this game that I could have gone completely without. There's a peculiar looking purple vomit egg that when you hatch it, you receive a funny jester hat. What's funny about this hat is that it gives you the ability to roll on an egg like a clown. You trying to tell me something, game? You think you're better than me, huh? You probably have a live stream of me playing this game while you're just sitting in your pool of money laughing at me, mocking me, making me look like... like a clown! With this ability, you're able to roll on top of water and sand, which acts like water in this game. Cool. I do also believe that this power-up, if you want to call it that, didn't need to be in this game, as it serves no major purpose besides the sand island for one level and a small part of the pirate level. God. Which is very stupid because when playing those islands you go through it normally and not needing to come in contact with the sand or the water at all. Then when the game developers realize, oh sh we haven't used this dumb thing we made into the game in a while, eh f it, let's throw it in this last level and not let the player know at all. All like at least give us some idea of where to go in the level because again going back the path is needed to take in order to complete these stages are never clear besides these stupid arrows and even those are misleading half the f***ing time. Eggs. The main point of this game is eggs. You ride them, you attack with them, you crack them, you hatch them, you gain life with them, you hatch creatures and chickens with them, you can't have a billy without egg. So in total, there's 72 eggs. There are three different eggs that do multiple things. Instead of showing you a big picture of all the eggs and what they do, I'm just gonna go through each egg and what they do as fast as I can, so... Hello, I'm just redoing this thing because my voice kept cracking the fire comb adds fire to your egg water comb adds water to your egg lightning increases attack when dashing ice comb turns eggs into ice wind comb increases attack iron comb increases attack wings give you wings which can double jump booster gives you a jetpack Pearl loop uses light to kill enemies. Thorn gives you thorns. Speed shoes give you speed. Bomb gives you a bomb. Spring shoes allow you to uh, jump really high into space where no one can hear you scream. Circus hat allows you to ride on eggs like a ball because that makes so much sense. Psychic hat allows you to control eggs. Heart hat gives you health. This egg has a chance to give you a one-up bat that sucks your life. A crow that'll blind you for I don't know how long. And then the creatures. Cypher, Clippin, Recky, Richie, Pelwan, Runny, Rabbish, Cole, Kaboot, more like Kahoot, Haha, ha, Funny, Datch, Glarin, Boskus, Arita, and Boo Boo. Then there's a Sega Egg, which is very rare. It can give you Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, a Chow, Rappy, Kapu Kapu, Knights, and Amigo. Then there's Super Clippin, Super Recky, a Chicken Suit, an Egg Bomb, a Chick Bomb. Then the Advantage Eggs that give you an item, which give you an advantage. Gorilla doubles power, chameleon turns you invisible, mouse makes you small, turtle gives you a shell, lion makes you invincible, dice brings everyone to one health, super fruit makes any egg big, tiger breaks all the eggs except the one that you're holding on to, sheep makes you sleepy, that's literally what it says. Hawk breaks eggs but with wind. Fox steals someone's item in multiplayer. Butterfly gives you health. Stopwatch freezes everything and everyone and the elder eggs just hatch the elder. Okay, that's it. Oh yeah, and there's some eggs if you connect your Game Boy Advance. You'll get the Choo Choo Rocket Egg, Knight's Score Attack Egg, Billy Hatcher Hyper Shoot Easy and Normal Eggs, and the Puyo Puyo Pop Egg. I have no clue what these games do, since one, I don't 
have these games and two, I don't know where my link cable is. That's fun. Most of the time when playing the game, you'll only see 20 of these eggs and the majority of them are the creature eggs. At times it can be helpful to have a little Pokemon help you wreak havoc on this chicken infested universe, but they can also be annoying when they don't hit anything you want them to hit. I will admit the only few parts of enjoyment I get when playing any of these stages is the boss levels because murdering big scary monsters makes me happy. The different enemies that show up are honestly just inconvenient. To me, the biggest enemy is the stages themselves, so then being thrown 20 plus monsters that just immediately lock onto you and sometimes either die instantly or take eight hits to die makes me want to commit real life game over. You've got the basic enemies that just show up to give you points and fruits, then it's the bigger mini bosses and then the main bosses at the end, which you only see once per island. The bosses are the coolest parts of these islands and we only get to see them once. That's like being given a Tesla and being told you could only look at it. Like yeah, I have a Tesla, but I can't flex that bitch. Whenever you do fight the bosses, the way you go about defeating them is very creative, which is why they are my favorite parts. You've got the Geico Gecko, who is sneaky. Captain Crunch swims. Topo, uh oh, there he go. Moles, more like dumb fatty. Ha. <laughs> <coughs> Saltum forces salt into my wounds. Dark Corvo is so fast. Whoa, look at him go. Ah, f I'm dead. Dark Raven is big and scary. Oh my god, what the f is that? Needless to say, I like these bosses, and bosses hurt me. Billy Hatcher is quite possibly my favorite and most nostalgic game to play. I have no clue how I got it, and when asking my mom where she got the game, she answered with, maybe your dad knows. Then asking my dad, he just answered, what is that? After 19 years, I finally sat down determined to beat this charming game, ended up mostly hating it, but still finally beat Billy and the stupid crows. After going over all its faults and negatives, would I still recommend this game? Well, do I sometimes stay up at night thinking about how hard I try in life for it to get me nowhere? Of course I do. Billy and his chicken friends have fallen into the deepest pits of video game obscurity thanks to Sega not giving a shit anymore. He did, however, show up in a compilation game for the PlayStation 2 and another game I played a bit of Sonic Riders as an unlockable character as well as Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing. So basically when Billy did well, Sega used that popularity in a few games until they died. Again, Billy does have a fan base with 99 members on Reddit. Make that a hundred! <laughs> <laughs> with posts consisting of good game and Hatcher Homer's bottom of the 14th. How nice. Recently, however, I've been seeing some posts here and there, mostly about Billy for Smash, which would be cool. I mean, we got Steve. Give us a chicken boy with eggs, please. I want chicken boy. I says, I says, I want chicken boy and Smash. Overall, I rank this game uh, 5 out of 5 McChickens. Wow, that's a yummy game. Hello, thank you for watching my dumb video. If you made it this far, leave a comment saying uh, I did it and I'll give it a heart. Uh, it took a while for me to make this video, sorry. I moved and then started classes again and then I went out of town for like a month. So now I'm finally back making content for you all. And if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll post it. I'm posting a video every week now. Woohoo! Weekly videos. He's really, he's really trying here. Hey, might as well click another video of mine. They're all bad, but you might find them funny. Shut up, chair. Okay. Um. Chicken boy. Out. Goodbye.